Thank you, Warren. This is the uh, this is the sound of work going on behind us. People working, machines working, creating products that America needs and the world needs. And I appreciate your introduction, Warren. I appreciate the commitment you've had to uh, to build this business. You and the people who work here built Acme Industries, not government. Thank you and congratulations. Now, um, I know we come today to talk about politics, but um, I'd like to have a moment of silence in, in honor of the people who lost their lives in Wisconsin at that tragic, tragic uh, shooting at the Sikh temple. The, uh, the tragedy is even more profound because the Sikh religion and the Sikh people are such peaceable, loving individuals. And I think it's also more tragic because the, the shooter was apparently someone who was motivated by hate. Hate based on race, hate based on religion. For all those reasons, this is uh, something which touches us very deeply. And in our moment of silence, I, I certainly pray that God might rest the souls of those who've lost their lives and comfort those that mourn. So let us take just a few seconds and uh, in the sound of the machinery behind us, let us stop and thank our maker for our blessings and pray for comfort for those that need it. Thank you very much. Now in just three months, or more precisely, two months and 30 days, America is going to have a choice about which direction to take. I'm today in a business known as Acme Industries. I only thought that was a cartoon uh, uh, business on, uh, on the Roadrunner cartoons, right? But you actually have made a lot of money, I'm sure, selling product uh, uh, to the coyote. Is that right? So we're here in the real Acme Industries. We have a business which does a very unusual thing. It does highly precision machining. It takes forged or cast parts that come from others and then it machines them, it, it uh, bores them or it grinds them. It puts them through e effectively a lathe type process where they become more and more precision. In order to do that kind of work, the workers who work here can't just uh, come off the street without skill. They in fact need to have skills that are, that are learned and trained. And so Acme Industries has, has partnered with Harper College, a nearby community college, to make sure that people coming through their programs are given the skills they need to work here. Just this last year, I think you've hired an additional 80 people. Is that right? That's, uh, that's good news. There's nothing like a good job. And the opportunity for people to have a good job is what a striving, thriving, successful enterprise is able to achieve. Now, as we look ahead at the choice that America faces in three months, we can follow two very different paths. It's said that the best predictor of the future is to see the performance of the past. And so if you want to know where President Obama's re-election would take us, you can simply look at his performance over the last three and a half years. So for instance, he said he was going to help create more jobs. And in fact, he said if we passed his stimulus, that we would never see unemployment go above 8%. Instead, it's been above 8% for the last 42 months, and there are 23 million Americans who can't find work or are underemployed or have dropped out of the workforce. He also said that if he was going to be successful, you'd see incomes going up. But instead, wages have come down. The median income of an American family is down $4,000 a year since President Obama has been president. He also said that he was going to cut the cost of health insurance. It was going to come down $2,500 per family. Have you seen that? No, as a matter of fact, it's gone up $2,500 a family. That's a difference of $5,000 a family. Gasoline prices have doubled. Food prices are up. The American middle class is struggling under this president. If we were to reelect him, you'd see more chronic unemployment, continuing wage decline or, or stagnation, and, of course, an economy on the verge of, of economic crisis given the massive debt we have. The president's solution for all these problems is to do more of the same. He wants another stimulus. The last one didn't work. The next one won't either. Mr. President Obama is simply out of ideas. He's out of excuses. 
and Illinois needs to help me make sure that in November we put him out of office. Now, I've, I've got a very different record. When I was governor of my state, we brought unemployment down to 4.7 percent, not the 8.3 percent you're seeing today. I was also able to see rising incomes and wages in my state. We also balanced the budget every year. And rather than leave the state with, uh, with a financial crisis at the door, we were able to build a rainy day fund of over $2 billion. I also have a plan to help middle-income families in America get the middle class growing and thriving again. We need to have America the best place in the world to be middle class, and I know how to do that. There are five things. There are five things I will do to get the middle class seeing good jobs, rising wages again, and to tame our budget deficit. Let me tell you what they are. Number one, we will take advantage of America's energy resources our coal, our gas, our oil, our renewables, nuclear. In part because of the technology right here at Acme, we're able to take advantage of natural gas in new plentiful amounts at low prices. Bringing in that natural gas into manufacturing is going to bring manufacturing jobs back to the United States, just as it's doing here at Acme. The, these, are, these are companies from all over the world that have operations in the United States manufacturing products, and Acme provides those products to them for ultimate assembly. They're bringing manufacturing back to America, in part because of energy. I will take advantage of energy to bring jobs back. Number two, I want to make sure our people have the skills to succeed. You're seeing those skills being developed as a relationship between Acme and, and Harper College. I want to see more effective training programs in this country. Believe we can do that to get our workers the skills they need to succeed. I want our schools, instead of performing at the bottom third, to be, perform among the very best in the nation. We have to put our kids first and sometimes put the teachers union behind, make sure our teachers and our kids come first. You see, for for me, the skills to succeed mean giving people the skills and the training they need and the education they need to be able to get a good job. Because getting a good job is elevating, it's uplifting, it strengthens the economy, and it strengthens the heart of the American people. One of the things that happened in the last uh, couple of decades was one of the greatest bipartisan successes we've seen. And that was President Bill Clinton and Republicans coming together to reform welfare. They reformed welfare not just to save money. More importantly, they reformed welfare to encourage people to work. They did not want a culture of dependence, dependency to continue to grow in our country, but instead wanted to have people have the blessings of work. And by virtue of that bipartisan effort that put work back into welfare, you saw the welfare caseload cut in half and you also saw the number of people in poverty come down year after year after year. That was a great accomplishment. I hope you understand that President Obama, in just the last few days, has tried to reverse that accomplishment by taking the work requirement out of welfare. That is wrong. If I'm president, I'll put work back in welfare. There is nothing better than a good job to help lift a family, to allow people to be able to provide for themselves, and to end the spread of a culture of dependency. We must include more work in welfare. When I was governor of my state, I fought time and again. My legislature passed a bill removing the work requirements at the level we'd had in the past. I vetoed that, and then fought time and again to get more work requirements, to raise the work requirements in my state. Not because I, I don't think people who need help should be helped. I very much agree that those who are seriously disabled or are unable to work need to have the help of the rest of us. But those who can work 
ought to have the opportunity for a good job, and if they're getting state assistance, they ought to have the requirement for a good job. We will end a culture of dependency and restore a culture of good hard work. Now, I mentioned, I mentioned five things. I've, I've only described two, energy and the skills to su succeed. There's a third, trade that works for us, trade that works for America. If people cheat stealing American jobs unfairly, as China has, we're going to put a stop to it, and we're going to open up new markets for our goods, particularly in Latin America. Trade has to work for America. Energy, skills, trade. The fourth is finally tackling our budget deficits. Economists have looked at the impact of big deficits. When deficits get too large, the debt gets too large as a factor relative to the total size of our economy. What happens is the economy slows down its growth. And a slow-growing economy doesn't create many jobs, just like we're seeing now in the Obama economy. And so I'm going to do something that's been spoken of but not accomplished. I'm going to finally cut the deficit and get America on track to a balanced budget. And one more thing, the fifth, we must champion small business. We have to – you know, over the last uh, 15 years, guess what proportion of all the jobs that have been created were created by small business? Almost two-thirds of all the jobs in America over the last 15 years have been created by small businesses like this, and even ones much, much smaller. And yet what's happening in Washington is a bunch of people who've never really worked in the private sector think they know better how to run an enterprise than the people who are actually doing it. They think they built these small businesses. They did not. They're smothering them. And so what I want to do is help small business by keeping their taxes competitive, by getting regulators to encourage them rather than crush them, and fi by finally getting rid of an enormous cloud that hangs over all sorts of small businesses in this country. And that's the cloud of Obamacare. we got to get rid of it. My, uh, my five-point plan is going to do something pretty important. It's going to help create – it's going to help small businesses and other businesses create 12 million new jobs in America, and we're going to see rising wages again and take-home pay. That is the answer for America – work and rising take-home pay. Let me tell you, I'm excited about the prospects of getting America back on track, because I know that if government is encouraging enterprise, instead of dampening it, you're going to see this country come roaring back with better jobs and better take-home pay. I know that because the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well in this country. It's alive and well also right here in Illinois. You know, I, I met a guy uh, – you may know him – Jim Leotold. You know Jim. You know Jim. And nodding your head. Jim. Jim didn't do so well in high school. He graduated number two from the bottom of his class. And uh, he went to his dad and said, look, college isn't in my future. Can I get a loan from you to start a business? And after a lot of discussion, his dad agreed to give him a loan. He went out and looked to see whether he could get one of these griddles to make hamburgers and those rollers to make hot dogs and found out they were more expensive than the money he had. The only thing he could make for the money he borrowed from his dad was sandwiches. So he set up some tables in a garage and made sandwiches, and then he delivered them to the workplace to people who wanted them. Now Jimmy John has 1,200 restaurants across this country. That, that's the kind of entrepreneurial spirit that you see in Americans across the country. You see, these individuals don't look to government. They instead look to themselves and say, what can I do to make myself better? What things can I do to enhance the prospects for myself and my family? It's just like a kid in, in school who decides, you know, I'm going to work and see if I can make the honor roll. 
if that kid makes the honor roll, I realize that he got to school on a bus and the bus driver got him there, but I don't give the bus driver credit for the honor roll. I give the kid the credit for the honor roll. And if, and, and if the, 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 the guys and gals who work here at ACME decide that they're going to go back to, to Harper College and see if they can't improve their skills and machining so they can get a promotion with higher wages here, if they do that, I realize that to get to Harper College, they're going to have to drive, and to drive, they're going to have to have a license, and to have a license, they got to go to the DMV. But if they get that promotion, I give them the credit. I don't give it to the DMV. And so when the President of the United States says, if you have a business, you didn't build it, someone else did that, I say baloney. The people here in Acme are the ones that built this business. I want to say one more thing. This is important. The choice that Illinois makes, the choice that America makes about the course we're going down could not lead to two very different places as this does. In my view, the president getting reelected would lead America to see long days of disappointing job numbers, disappointing wage growth, and disappointing economic circumstances that could frighten away the kinds of investors we need to grow our economy. If I get elected, we're going to see once again a strong and vibrant middle class with people confident they can get a good job, and if they work hard, they can get a promotion, and where moms and dads know that their child is going to have a brighter future than they had. There are two very, very different choices. But there's a consequence also that goes beyond our economic well-being in this country. It goes to our very capacity to defend liberty for ourselves, for our friends around the world. I understand uh, from Warren that you have a couple of guys here that, uh, that originally came from Poland, or their ancestors came from Poland, more than a couple. And uh, I was honored last week to be in Poland and met with Lech Walesa. What a, uh, what a world hero he is. And, uh, and he said something I will not forget. He said, the world needs American leadership. Where are you? We need your leadership, America. There's no question but that a strong America, strong families, strong values, strong economy, great workplaces, a strong military, these things are the best allies peace has ever known. I love this country. I love what it represents. I love the fact that when the founders wrote the Declaration of Independence, they said that it was the Creator that gave us our rights, not our government, but our Creator. And among them, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We have freedom in this country to pursue happiness as we choose. Our economy runs on freedom. It doesn't run on government. It runs on freedom. We must restore the kinds of freedoms that bring people here from all over the world seeking to fulfill their dreams. We're a nation of big dreamers, kids who want the honor roll, guys and gals who want the promotion, even people like Warren who say, I think I can build a business that will employ people and be successful. This is a nation of greatness. We need to restore that greatness, not by building government, but by restoring our capacity, individual by individual, to pursue our dreams. Everything I will do as president will be focused on helping American people have greater freedom and the capacity to fulfill their dreams. We will have, we will have a stronger nation, a stronger middle class. America will be able to fulfill its role as a champion of liberty, and we will keep America the hope of the earth. Thank you so very much. Great to be with you today. Thank you.